You know, when I put out that poll a few weeks ago, I wasn't expecting uh, such a landslide victory. I thought the others would at least get some sort of votes, but uh, Xenomorphs completely uh, creamed all the other ones. <laughs> oh well, let's get into this. You guys wanted it? Here you go. Today in Monsters of the Mind, we're talking about the famous sci-fi horror icons, the Xenomorphs. Before we do, though, I should, uh, quickly clarify something about these guys, and that's actually the name Xenomorph. You see, the name Xenomorph, when it was used in the movies, it was not meant to be a classification. You see, Xenomorph is pretty much the animal equivalent of the term UFO, in that it's not the official name of the object, it's what you give to an object that's not identified. U UFO means unidentified flying object, not spaceship. And Xenomorph is meant to refer to animals that you can't identify. It's not the genus name. In fact, most official media just calls them the aliens from aliens. But because that sounds clunky, I'm just going to call them Xenomorphs for convenience sake and because that's what most people know them as. Xenomorphs are an alien species with a rather vague backstory. You see, in some continuities, these guys are an artificial species created as a bioweapon, while in other continuities, they're naturally occurring species from the planet Xenomorph Prime. But some sources end up splitting the difference and make them a technically naturally occurring species, but the ones we see were experimented on and turned into weapons. Anyway, Xenomorphs are rather famous for their rather unusual life cycle. Similar to bees or wasps, they have a queen who lays a lot of eggs. When these eggs hatch, they spawn a creature known as a face hugger. The face hugger latches onto a creature's face and lays an egg in its stomach and then dies. A while later, the egg in the stomach hatches and the young bursts out of its host chest and uh, matures into the form we think of when we think of xenomorphs. Also, the adults will tend to take on the attributes of whatever they were hosted in. Human-hosted ones are bipedal, while ones hosted in dogs will be quadrupeds, for example. Xenomorphs are highly aggressive and very dangerous. They have sharp claws and teeth, two mouths, incredibly acidic blood, and spikes all over their body that could easily impale you. Now, Xenomorphs are nowhere near as intelligent as other fictional aliens who are usually betrayed as, like, borderline gods if they're intelligent, and they're not really even as intelligent as humans. But, they're not mindless monsters. They have shown ability to learn simple operations, like operating simple machines, or knowing how to silently move throughout places despite their heavy body weight. Now that we know what we're dealing with, let's look at the history of these guys. Xenomorphs first appeared in the 1979 sci-fi horror Alien. In this film, a group of what are essentially galactic tow truck drivers follow a distress signal to a moon. When they arrive, they don't find anyone and instead find a huge amount of eggs. One of the eggs hatches and attaches itself to one of the crew members. They find the creature impossible to remove, but eventually it falls off and they decide that's that. However, later, the alien bursts out and quickly matures, and it slowly picks off the crew one by one, before it meets its own end by getting launched out of an airlock and getting burnt by rockets. The end. Despite the film's popularity, it, it took a while for there to be a sequel. But then again, considering how the follow-up installment is considered to be one of the greatest sequels ever made, it might have been worth the wait. Anyway, in Aliens, as the title suggests, while well, there is only one Xenomorph in the first movie, this time we're dealing with a bunch of them, including the introduction of the Xenomorph Queen. This film also reveals that Xenomorphs will coat their prey in mucus and hang them in cocoons. Anyway, this film, while still being a sci-fi horror like the first one, also adds a bit of action this time as the main plot arounds hunting down Xenomorphs and killing them. In the end, they managed to kill the queen by launching it out of an airlock. These aliens really need to stop going near those things. Six years later, we got Alien 3. We're back to one alien again. This time it was incubated inside a dog, causing it to be quadrupedal. Also, there's the threat of a new alien queen being born, which as you can imagine, would be bad. This time, the alien is not launched out of an airlock, but rather, it's exposed to liquid metal and then immediately cold water, causing it to explode due to chemistry stuff. I don't know, I'm a biologist, not a chemist, jeez. And the queen embryo is burnt in self-sacrifice. 
Five years later and we have alien resurrections. This time the US government wants to use the xenomorphs as weapons, but they end up escaping and start causing a ruckus again. This time, we're introduced to a xenomorph who's more overtly human-like, so much so that it kills the new xenomorph queen due to not recognizing it as its mother, before it meets its own end by being blown into space. This time, this time it was from a wall exploding and not an airlock, so way to shake up the formula. After this, the franchise went on, well, not really a hiatus, but during the 2000s, we, uh, didn't really get any mainstream movies, all we got were spin-off films that I'll talk about later. In 2012, the Alien series came back of Prometheus, but this movie doesn't have xenomorphs in it, so it's worthless to the conversation. But then nearly 20 years after Resurrection, we finally got another movie with the xenomorphs, with Alien Covenant. This one is a prequel film explaining how the aliens got to the moon we saw them in the first movie. Well, that's the mainline movies, but the Alien franchise goes pretty deep, so let's dig into some other material. The largest spin-off the series has spawned would be the Alien vs. Predator subseries, where they pit the Xenomorphs against another alien species, the Predators from Predator. I know that's not their official name, but uh, this isn't about them, so uh, it doesn't matter. Oh well, whatever. This is a matchup that's been explored in video games, including a first-person shooter on the Atari Jaguar that lets you play as an either an alien or predator alongside a human soldier, but the most famous AVP media is the movie duology. There's not really much to talk about here, what it sounds like is what you get, you get aliens fighting predators. But we do find out that if hosted in a predator, then a xenomorph will have tusks, so that's interesting. The franchise has also spawned many video games. Uh, two of the most famous are Aliens Colonial Marines, which, uh, which became infamous for the fact that the trailers looked a lot nicer than the final game. And the next year we got Alien Isolation, which was a lot better received. Weirdly enough, there was an alien toy line meant for children? Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, kids love these movies. Hey kids, what was your favorite part? Was it, was it the part where the alien burst out of that guy's chest, or uh, was it the scene where those guys get dismembered? Yeah, hey kids, play with them, yeah. Then again, I don't know why I'm surprised about this. In the 80s and 90s, they made toy lines out of any movie, regardless of how appropriate they were for children. So yeah, I don't know what they were smoking back then to, that caused this weird trend, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah, also contrary to popular belief, there were never any plans for an alien cartoon. The pictures that are often circulated around claiming to be from it are actually from a scrapped commercial, not a show. Ah, but speaking of xenomorphs and kid-friendly properties... In the 90s, Disney wanted uh, more attractions at Disneyland that appealed to more older kids. So, one idea they had was a ride based on the Alien franchise. Eh, but uh, they eventually realized that would have been a bit too much, so they scrapped the Xenomorphs and replaced it with an original ride, Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter, which is a cult classic. But since they still had the theme park rides to the franchise, they uh, decided to make a scene based off Alien in the Great Movie Ride, which, if you don't know, was a ride that uh, took you through scenes of some of the most iconic movies that Universal didn't own the rights to. In addition to the Alien vs. Predator franchise, Xenomorphs are pretty common species to use in crossovers. Batman, Superman, and Green Lantern have all fought them. Okay, <laughs> okay, I kind of find that funny because <laughs> what are Xenomorphs supposed to do against Superman or Green Lantern? Have you even seen what those two are capable of? Okay, Batman, that's a bit more of a fair fight, but <laughs> I just kind of find that funny. <laughs> I don't actually know what happens in these comics, though, so maybe they come up with some explanation as to how they're an actual threat to them, but, uh, whatever. And a xenomorph appears as a guest character in Mortal Kombat 10, alongside other horror icons like Jason Voorhees, a predator, and, uh, Leatherface. Oh, before you ask, Leatherface is not eligible for this series, but Jason is. So, yeah. Xenomorphs are probably the most famous non-sapien aliens, and due to the Alien franchise's success, Xenomorphs are common subjects of parodies and homages. For example, there's the Metroid video game series, which is inspired by the movies and features its own parasitic aliens with the Metroids. And in general, there are a lot of characters or monsters in media that are uh, pretty blatantly just Xenomorphs in all but name. Well, it's all for this bonus episode of Monsters of the Mind. The next four will be the ones who uh, didn't get top billing. So, bye!